We're currently off-site at a giant 2,400 square foot building. Folks are currently dancing the night away on a dull concrete slab, but fear not. We're about to transform this place into something truly fantastic. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. To start off, our epoxy flooring system offers a fantastic feature of eliminating unsightly cracks and expansion joints in the slab, resulting in a seamless designer floor. For this step, we'll be using our floor patch epoxy gel to fill in the small cracks and saw cut expansion joints. To open up the spider cracks, use a diamond blade or crack chaser on a grinder. Take time to fully clean any loose rocks and dust. This will make applying the floor patch much easier. Once the dust is cleaned up, we can proceed to applying the floor patch. Combine equal parts of both sides A and B and mix them on the slab using a putty knife until a consistent color is achieved. Filling the cracks and gaps first ensures that when we return to grind the concrete slab with the big grinder, we're gonna level that floor patch down nice and easily. It's important to slightly overfill any crack or expansion joint. Prepare your batches of floor patch so that they can be applied to the floor within the working window of 30 to 40 minutes. The product will cure and be ready for the next step within about six to nine hours. All right, we have the big saw cut expansion joints all filled up. Now the next step is to open up any little spider cracks that may have happened as the concrete has settled and cured. So there's a few guarantees that I've heard from a concrete contractor. There's three actually, I just learned a third one. Number one, that concrete is going to dry. Number two, nobody's gonna come steal that concrete. And number three, it's gonna crack. So that's why they put those expansion joints. You're trying to guide where you want those cracks to go, but uh, every plan, doesn't always go uh, how you plan it. So you could fill those, we're gonna open those up. If it's a very thin, tiny crack, the crack patch will not get in there and fill that uh, successfully. So we're gonna open it up with a diamond blade that you could pick up at the Home Depot. They also sell, I'll leave a link in the description below on Amazon, what the pros use, it's called a crack chaser blade. You don't need it, but it makes this job really, really easy. It's almost like a cone shaped diamond blade that's really easy to follow the the twists and turns of those little cracks. So I'm gonna mask up, I'll wear my eyes, my ears, I'm gonna cut open those cracks, we'll vacuum it up, and then we're gonna mix up the same product, fill those cracks, let it dry, and then the big grinder should be here, and then we're gonna diamond grind this whole floor. Guys, we're back, it's day two. We got the crack patch complete. Kenny's on the grinder. We'll grind that crack patch nice and smooth and open up that concrete slab. And then we're gonna apply that moisture seal epoxy primer later on today. We got a surprise extra project happening. Nathan is tackling two new bathrooms. They're about 30 square feet. So Nathan's just hand grinding those with our four inch grinder. When we're all done, we'll clean the dust and then we're gonna apply the moisture seal epoxy primer and come back tomorrow for Marble Day. All right, as you can see here, I'm using the grinder. We're grinding the whole entire floor with the big walk behind grinder. We use the four inch grinder to go all the way around the perimeter because the big walk behind grinder can't get up to the edge. So that's why we use the four inch grinder. And we did the same thing around all the posts. All right, so we just finished grinding the, the floor. We've cleaned up, everything looks good. We finished dressing all the patches that we had to take care of, and now we're gonna do the moisture seal. All right, we're back from lunch. My belly is full, I'm ready for a nap. But first, before that, we gotta lay down that moisture seal epoxy primer. That's our foundation coat. That moisture seal is gonna penetrate in like tree roots to the concrete we just opened up with that fancy diamond grinder. That's gonna bond to the concrete and that's yep. gonna allow us to go to the next step. Yep, that'll set up overnight. We'll be back in the morning. If we're in back here before 24 hours, we won't need to sand this floor. Correct. Which is crucial. Yeah. It's a big floor and I don't wanna sand it. No, not at all. So within 24 hours, you can apply that marble coating with no sanding necessary. It'll have a real good chemical bond. To apply the moisture seal, we're gonna mix up four and a half gallons at a time, which yep. are three of our kits. It's gonna apply it about 250 to 300 square foot per gallon and a half. That's what our uh, application ratio is. And then we're gonna spread it with some Magic Trial floor squeegees and back roll for a nice uniform finish with a roller 
and then we're gonna walk out of here. If you have excessive bubbles, some off-gassing happening, depending on how your concrete is, you can use some isopropyl alcohol to pop those bubbles on your way out. That helps. And then uh, let this cure overnight. Yeah. Let's go to work. Let's go. Kenny, what's the most important step of any epoxy project? Mixing your edges in the bucket. Correct. Because if you don't mix your edges, you could have failure. Sticky, sticky icky spots. Yeah. You do not want a sticky, icky, icky spot on the floor. It, it, yeah. That's why we got to lay this down for them. I mean, this just like countertop recipes. Yeah. You want them to check off a little bit before we mix up. Yeah. 120 100, gallons. Yeah, and then be like, four epoxies. Like, hmm. I don't really like that. Can you change the color? <laughs> <laughs> that sample board's still going to take a quite a bit of epoxy because you still want a realistic look as we use our floor tools because we want to be able to replicate this on Ken's big floor. You like the flow more or the blotch? I think I like the flow more. It's an off gas, every little one. So we gotta fill that before we bring the epoxy layer here. Otherwise, we'll have these sort of bubbles in our marble layer, which we do not want. So what I'm gonna do is sand till that ring is gone. See how it's smooth here? Then I'm gonna bring in either some super glue or maybe a little Bondo. We're gonna cover this so nothing's gonna show. And then uh, we'll put the marble over this and, not, and these will be gone. All right, we are pretty much prepped out, guys. It's an important step to get your mind right, get everything organized, because once we start mixing up floor and epoxy with this much, you want it to go nice and smooth. You want to get that laid down as quick as possible. With our floor epoxy, it is open and workable for a very long time. On the last 1,200 square foot floor, I was able to walk on that first bit of epoxy I poured two hours later, and it still was great. But we're going to work quick to get our ribbons poured out, and then we'll start melding with our rollers and magic trowels and getting rid of any air bubbles using 91% isopropyl alcohol. We're going to mix 15 gallons at a time in our big garbage cans. I would not do that if I didn't have my partner Kenny here to help me because 15 gallons of epoxy is a lot of weight. So we're going to mix up a full batch. We'll pour it into our five gallon buckets where we're going to then add our color. And when the color is added, we're going to mix again there and then go pour it out. And then our mixing crew is going to mix up another 30 gallons. And then we're going to work our way right through that flooring epoxy. We're going to apply about six ounces per square foot of project. So for the two metallic marbles, you only need about two to three ounces. That's gonna flow a lot less, but we're going exotic, beautiful brown marble. We're having six colors, so we're gonna add additional material that helps that flow and look more natural. I'm excited, this is the biggest floor project I've ever done. It's gonna look fantastic. Don't blink, here comes the fun part. We're experimenting with a new floor style for this spacious area. Our client desired a marble floor with a seamless flow and multiple colors. To prevent colors from blending excessively, we poured wide ribbons of each color. Then we followed that by using nine inch rollers mounted on poles. We glided the colors over one another, resulting in breathtaking marble effect without creating a muddy appearance. After melding, we followed that up with a gentle misting of 91% isopropyl alcohol from a pump sprayer. This technique effectively eliminates any trapped air bubbles in the epoxy while adding a captivating selling and lacing effect to the marble floor. Throughout the installation process, we applied the alcohol about three to four times, ensuring a bubble-free finish. Pouring an exotic, poor bathroom floor. The process is straightforward and about the same as the countertop version, Prepare the epoxy, add your colors, pour it back into the bucket, and then we're pouring an instant floor out of a bucket. 
Once the epoxy settled and leveled naturally, floor complete, I just came back for the ultimate top coat step, which was just about as easy. We did that in half the amount of time as it took me to do half of that by myself. So thank you so much for yeah. coming out here, bro. So my takeaway on that, if you have a jumbo floor, reach out to some friends, reach out to some neighbors. It's pretty easy to mix epoxy and that sped this whole process up. We didn't have to stop, mix, clear, add color, then pour again while that's setting up. That yeah. was fast. It looks fantastic in there, dude. It is amazing. I'm so pumped to show you all this. Yeah. You're going to be amazed on how beautiful it looks. Yeah. And the two, you know, the roller and trial method made it, you know, was a level yes. up again. I, right? I think uh, that helped us meld everything. And then coming back with mm -hmm. that magic trial and just kind of smoothed it out. It just really made it nice. Right. And where in the beginning we had almost too much material in that one section. Right. Like we didn't spread this enough. So we blended it. We grabbed the trowel and pulled it and spread it. And it kept the color separated super good. It did. It I really it did. Make mud, but it didn't do that. Right. So that was a that was a fun, fun project. Yeah, no, I think we learned as we went. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow's ultimate top coat. So this will cure overnight. We turned the heat up. We turned out all the lights. I did one couple final loops there, picking out flies and little boogers, any surface tension from the alcohol. I touched that with my finger, broke that up. Let's go get some supper. Let's do I'm it. I'm tired. Good work, man. Good job. Don't let me trip. Okay, you're going to step up. There you go. Okay, now just stand right there. Don't open your eyes yet. Don't throw me down, Clark. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is gorgeous. You like it? Oh my gosh, that is so gorgeous. Somebody says it's gonna distract from the people looking at the bride and groom, because they're gonna be looking at the floor. Well, they're gonna be looking at the floor for sure. That turned out so perfect. How do you like the way it blends with the wood, different colors yeah, of woods? Yeah, it's perfect. It turned out perfect. And, and some silver? Be so perfect. That is just exotic and fabulous. I love it. Yeah, isn't it fun looking at it from up here? Yes. It's totally different uh, look. And when the tables and everything are in here and the decorations, it'll kind of tone it down a little bit. I just didn't know. I thought it was gonna be more like busy. And so I'm glad it's not. I'm glad it's all just like flowing kind of this direction. So you're happy? I'm happy. All right. It's fantastic. Good. Thank you so much. It's cold here in Oregon. It is the very end of October. Winter has arrived, so it's been in the 30s. We had to let this floor cure overnight, and that's totally acceptable and normal in colder temperatures. We could have proceeded to the next step if the temperature stayed above, you know, 50, but it got really cold, especially by the doors and the cold air blowing under the barn doors. It kept the epoxy a little too fresh to proceed to the next step. It's a pro tip, guys, to press pause and make sure that this floor is ready for the next step, just give it a couple extra days to cure in those colder months. I need to mechanically rough up the entire floor because it's past that 24 hour open window. So I rented a floor buffer for $30 over at the Home Depot. Can't beat that price. I do not want to sand a floor like this with a five inch sander. That would be a recipe for disaster. It's gonna take me maybe a half an hour to quickly with a maroon scotch Bright pad, rough up this floor. We'll get out the dust and then we're applying the ultimate top coat. Some pro tips when applying the ultimate top coat and prepping your area to apply the ultimate top coat. You saw how thoroughly we cleaned. You wanna get any loose debris the heck out of here like you want every step when working with floors. We vacuumed the perimeter really well. We vacuumed the entire field and then we cleaned the entire floor with 91% isopropyl on a little dust mop. That gets rid of most all that debris. Now we're starting with a nice clean canvas we're setting ourselves up for success. We delinted those rollers with some tape and we prepped plenty of rollers just in case we have to make a quick little switch. Because this project is huge, we're over 2,300 square feet, we're gonna apply this ultimate top coat a little bit differently. We're gonna mix up two kits at a time, that's three gallons, and then we're gonna apply that ultimate top coat in a ribbon and spread it on the floor like we're painting a wall. We're gonna apply the ultimate top coat midway through this floor. Myself, Nathan, and Ken, the homeowner, they're all gonna help us. So on a big project, guys, a pro tip, grab some helpers. 
even though they haven't done this, just watch a few videos, do a little practice piece, and then you're off to the races. When we get about midway through, I'll peel off and do one final pass across the floor, working my way out of the building. That way we have a nice uniform finish. That ultimate top coat will dry overnight. You'll be able to walk on it within 24 to 36 hours. In the colder months, extend that. Give it a little more time to dry. We've taken the accelerator out of that ultimate top coat so you have longer time to work with it. No need to run, race, and have a heart race, but that's gonna extend the cure time a little bit. In the summer months, you are walking on that floor in 24 hours. In the winter, give it yourself 24 to 36. We're back, it's probably three, four months later. So do you think the floor is helping you book more events? Absolutely. Everybody talks about the floor now. They, yeah. they just lose their mind over the floor. The bride's picturing her white dress laid out yeah. on the floor, right? How many uh, events have you had here roughly, you think? We did 20 weddings last year. Wow. The year before that, 100. You've, you've been open a few years now? This is our second year. Full second year. Yeah. We're located in Southern Oregon, but we have folks coming from Texas to get married here. Where mm -hmm. can people learn about your event space? Sungateplace.com. Book your spot now. Come bust the move on this epoxy floor that you just saw get created with Stone Coat Epoxy. I think you need to have a move. Oh, man. I, I think you should have a move for this. I got no music going. I can I put can, on music. I can get tempted. <laughs> 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 oh, let's go. <laughs> Whoa! And on that note, thanks for watching from Stoke Oak Countertops. Don't forget, you got this, and we'll see you on the next video.